movie review of Ghost Rider, starring Nick Cage and Ava Mendez. One of the strongest points for Ghost Rider is the casting. They definitely landed some excellent actors for this movie. Starring Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze, a Ghost Rider, Ava Mendez playing Roxanne Simpson, Peter Fonda playing Mephistopheles, with my two favorites being Sam Elliott as a caretaker and Donna Logue who plays Mac. All the key parts of this movie are cast very well. My featured actor this week is Donna Logue, who plays Mac, Johnny's friend and confidant. He's pretty much one of my favorite actors. For all you MTV fans out there, he was Jimmy the Cab Driver on the I Want My MTV commercials back in 1996. Some of his notable movies include Jerry Maguire, A Bright Shining Lie, Tower of Steve, The Patriot. He was also in the movie Confidence and American Splendor. He is now currently doing the TV show The Knights of Prosperity. My favorite role was Quinn in the 1998 action superhero movie Blade alongside Steven Dorff and opposite Wesley Snipes. Check him out in the new movie Zodiac, which comes out in theaters today. Like Michael Ben, who normally doesn't play leading roles, he adds a lot to the movies he's in. That's all for my feature actor of the week. Now back to my review of the movie Ghost Rider. As far as the acting goes, it doesn't take anything away from the film, although Nick Cage does tend to overact in his movies. As far as the plot is concerned, this is where we start to see the cracks in the movie. The film has the special effects to carry the movie, but the storyline just isn't that interesting. The execution of the story and the development of the characters are mediocre at best. The one thing that just annoys the hell out of me in a superhero movie is when you have a single police officer on his own you know, confront the Ghost Rider. You know, keep in mind he does have a flaming skull. You know, this is just so stupid. You know, It's like in the movie Superman Returns where some guy's unloading 500 bullets at Superman and it's doing no damage at all. He then pulls out a pistol and shoots him in the eye and the bullet bounces off. You know, this is where I get so annoyed. If you empty 500 bullets on someone, and they smile at you and keep on coming, it's time just to fill your pants with some goo and cry like a little girl, because it's all over. The ending. Man. I've seen a lot of movies. And this has to be one of the worst endings that I've ever seen. You know, words can't describe how bad this ending is. What happens when Johnny Blaze faces off at the end with Mephistopheles? It's just unforgivable. You know, we understand there may or may not be a sequel, but damn, the least you could do is finish the first movie. You know, this is like the Britney Spears of movie endings. Let this be a lesson to all you out there making movies. Finish the first movie before you start selling me tickets to the sequel. The ending of this film, you know, really ruined the whole movie for me. You know, this is the biggest reason this movie was released in February. Always, and I mean always, beware of any movie released in this month. This is an industry fact. This movie would get killed in the summertime. One and done. When I saw the trailer, I couldn't believe that it was coming out this soon. Now I know. It took 10 years to make the movie Unforgiven. 10 years. That script floated around Hollywood. Maybe it needed to take that long for the right people to make the right version of that movie. Look how well that did. You know, I liken this to Alien vs. Predator. Those are two successful franchises. They could have made three great movies out of that. But with horrible casting and a rushed script, that franchise is pretty much dead. This is what happens when you rush to get movies out. It's better to make them right than to make a quick buck. By making a quick 5 to 20 million, they cost themselves 50 to 200 million. These studios keep rushing to get films out that aren't ready to be made or completed. I think this movie could have been a lot better. They had all the right ingredients. If you're wondering, you know, why am I being so hard on this movie? I think it's because that it, it could have been a great movie. They had everything in place to make it great, and they just rushed it. There are a ton of bad movies out there. They're easy to make. But I'm always hardest on the movies that have the budget and the talent to make it work. And somehow, they didn't. I give this movie... One and a half stars. If you would like to submit a movie, email me at MrBlacksMovieReviews at Hotmail.com. Stop by each week to see videos on movie reviews, the box office top 10, DVD releases, the flop of the week, 
and I go over user reviews and comments. Subscribe to this channel and you may be able to save time and money from seeing the wrong movie.